We got another gadget. Last thing we want to talk about, Pixel 6a. Yep. The review is out. The phone is out there and you can choose to get one. And I have a hot take about it, but I'm going to wait till the end to give you that. Spicy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just go over the phone itself. Um, we already knew about Pixel 6 Pro. We already knew about Pixel 6. Pixel 6a is the budget version in Google's lineup. It's 449 this year, 449 US dollars. Yep. And for that price, you get the same Tensor chip and then cheaper things around it. Yep. Those cheaper things being a flat 1080p 60 hertz display. Um, I think it's only one spec, 128 gigs of storage and 60 gigs of RAM. Correct, yeah. Um, yeah with the A series now. It's, it's about a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty good. And dual cameras, and they are not the same as the new Pixel 6 and 6 Pro cameras. Right. It's an old 12 megapixel camera and an ultra wide. They took away the headphone jack. The yep. Pixel 5a had a headphone jack. The yep. 6a does not have a headphone jack. And they do not have wireless charging. So those yeah. are two things to note. Some people might get, not care about those things. I can already see the comments because at this point as we record this, I haven't finished the review yet, but I can already tell that when this comes out, there will be comments in the review video saying, I don't really care. Why do you guys care so much about wireless charging? It's not a big deal if you don't have it. Totally fair. But if you do have wireless charging now, then you're going to not like yeah, losing wireless charging. Definitely. So there's that. Um and that's pretty much it. It has the slower in-screen fingerprint reader that the 6 Pro also has, which kind of annoyed me. Uh, did you like the design? It kind of looks like the other Pixels. I like the design. I, I like that it's more compact. Um, 6.1 inches is still pretty big. I loved Pixel 5. Yeah. I loved Pixel 4a. Um, I think 449, they, they, they put the Pixel 5a at 449 as well, and Pixel 4a was 349 which is just way so good. And yeah. Pixel 4a was such an amazing phone with an amazing screen. And so when you move it up $100, there's a lot that you can get in the competition. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the cameras. Yeah. I. Th so they added new cameras in the Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro. <clears throat> they didn't really do anything with those new cameras. Yeah. That was the worst part about it is like they added this huge... 50 megapixel sensor that they were binning on. And we were hoping like, oh, they've been using the same sensor for like four or five years now. They've literally used it for like five years. Pixel 3, Pixel 4, Pixel two. 4. Started on 2. Pixel 2, Pixel 5, yeah. Yeah, 2 yeah. through 5 was the exact same sensor. So they were getting a new sensor. We were like, it's going to be way better. Had a little bit more depth of field, but the processing, exactly the same. Yeah. Um, so that said... If they're not going to make it better besides the processing or besides like a little bit more depth of field and maybe a little bit lo better low light performance than whatever. Yeah. It's still one of the best cameras you can get at that price point. That's where I landed. So I, on one hand, I've seen a lot of this particular Sony sensor and a lot of new phones we've tested. The Nothing phone has the same camera sensor as the ROG Phone 6, which has the same camera sensor as the Nord 2T, which is the same camera sensor as like another phone we just tested. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's like a B, B plus sometimes camera. Yeah. doesn't really freeze motion very well. It's kind of noisy at night, but it's fine. And so when I hear on paper that the Pixel 6a has a worse camera, an older, lower spec camera than the other 6 and 6 Pro, I think the natural instinct is, oh, darn, it's not going to be as good. But it turns out it's the same sensor that they've been using for many, many years, and they've got that pipeline yeah. down pat, and the Tensor chip is super fast. It is one of the best cameras in any budget phone. Yeah. I went around, took photos with it, took videos with it, and I was very happy with it, much more than a lot of flagships these days. The yeah. RG phone can't hold a candle in the camera department to the Pixel 6a. Yeah. So that was worth noting. Um, my big qualm with this phone is it's a Pixel, and lately, we don't know how well these phones age, right? Right. They've had some really odd performance issues and bugs and things have come up with pixels. Yeah. And as of right now, 60 hertz is one of those things where you either don't care at all or it is a bit of a turnoff in buying a phone because mm -hmm. you can get 120 hertz in a budget phone mm -hmm. pretty easily today. Mm -hmm. Even though so the nothing phone has... The nothing phone, the A53... The some Poco phones, yeah. like a lot of phones in three to four to five hundred dollars have 120 hertz displays. Yeah. And I can also already read the comments of people going, I can't even tell the difference. Like, who cares? But this is 
Okay, you know how the iPhone SE and the iPhones are like some of the smoothest 60 hertz phones? Yeah. This is one of the jankiest 60 hertz oh. phones. It is constantly, I feel like I shouldn't, it's 60 hertz. I shouldn't see dropped frames yeah. and choppy animations. Yeah. And I already do on day one. And we know how pixels age. That's not a good start for me. So like the Tensor chip is powerful enough that it launches apps quickly. Yeah. Like when I hit the camera button, it opens the camera quickly. When I open a new app and like swipe over, the things load quickly. But when I'm scrolling in the web browser and when I'm like moving, scrolling the notification shade and moving between apps, yeah. the fact that I can like feel that it's definitely not high refresh rate, yeah, it doesn't bother me so much now as much as I know it's going to not be as good in the future. I mean, that's like memory versus processing, right? And yeah. it, that, that was the weird thing about the Pixel 6 series was that I was reviewing the 6, you were reviewing the Pro, and neither of us had almost any issues in the first two weeks. And then over time, it just got glitchier and jankier and glitchier yep. and jankier. Uh, and so, yeah, it's 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 kind of sad. I feel like the, the mid-ranged pixels, surprisingly, with like the mid-range Qualcomm chips have been the most stable. So the Pixel 5, really stable. Pixel 4a, really stable. But mm -hmm. every time they make a high-end pixel, it ends up being janky. But now, the problem with this is this is technically mid, quote-unquote mid-range, but it's got a Tensor chip. So it's using the same processor. Yeah. Um, that could be a bad thing because it is smaller with a smaller battery and the battery life we got kind of middle of the road, not amazing battery life. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I mean, maybe 60 hertz will help it. Um, it's been okay for me. Uh, it's another thing where like I do have a wireless charger in my car and at, at my desk and like not being able with, to use with that. some phones, it's fine. If you don't have great battery life, you can just like casually leave yeah. it on the wireless charger. Um, but yeah, no, that, that, it was fine. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get the true material you experience, this is like the cheapest way to do it technically. But I think for like Prime Day, the Pixel 6 was like 100 bucks off, which only makes that $50 more than this phone. Um, yeah. So if you want 90 hertz wireless charging, everything the Pixel 6 does, mm -hmm. there's that. I do like this phone feels very dense, which is kind of a nice feeling. It definitely... It feels denser than like the nothing phone. Yeah, that was kind of funny. We're like holding them side by side and like the premium feel, I'm doing air quotes, the like yeah. premium feeling phone was was actually the Pixel 6a because you're holding metal and glass, but also it's like a little bit more compact and heavier. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this density feels good. Yeah. Um, but are you ready for my hot take? I'm ready. If you give the nothing phone the Pixel 6a's camera, it is the best budget phone in the world. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, think that's a hot take. I think that <laughs> the only pushback you're going to get on that is the people that want a budget phone that can play games the at chip. high frame rate. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I think it's a hot take. Because there's like the other phones that have flagship processors that are around the same price. Definitely. So in like the in the normal everyday day to day use, I, I think that would hold up pretty strong. Yeah. And I think as soon as you get to like comparing it with the ones that did put a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in there or even the iPhone SE, the ones that have powerful chips that can play games for a while. Yeah. Then you'll see the difference. But uh, yeah, the Nothing phone is actually smoother than my Pixel 6 Pro. Yeah. Whatever they did with the optimization, and I guess it's probably a lot uh. of the same team that worked for OnePlus, very smooth, very different from the Pixel. Material U is just kind of glitchy. <laughs> I yeah. think that's the problem. Like We even talked about how the Nothing phone is almost very like stock-ish and Pixel-like. It feels like an older Pixel mm -hmm. that didn't have Material U and was very just like... This is Android. It has a lot of material use stuff. Yeah. I mean, they've yeah. got like the the notification shade is the color of your wallpaper and all that stuff. It's yep. just they don't have the weird widgets and that kind of funky right. stuff. They have their own dot yeah, pattern. Dot matrix stuff, stuff. Yeah. with like one or two apps that feels not finished. They have I don't an know. NFT widget. Oh, God. And flashing <laughs> lights on the back. And a fake yeah. Tesla widget that doesn't do anything. It doesn't work. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So 449. I guess if you want the best mid-range camera, there's that. And then if you want a Pixel, which, I mean, people were complaining that apparently the Nothing phone, because it's using the Snapdragon 778G+, Plus. that chipset is only going to be supported by Qualcomm through Android 14. Right. Which means the Pixel, and the Pixels always get at least three full years of software updates. So this, I'm assuming, launched with Android 11. Mm-hmm. So it'll get 12, 13, and 14. Guarantee. 
uh, guaranteed. And then the Nothing Phone will probably only get, sorry, I meant, uh, I think the Nothing Phone's only gonna get Android. Wait, we're on, we're not on 11, Jesus. This is hard. Okay, we're on Android 12. Yeah, Nothing right? Phone is Android 12. 13 is in beta right now. Nothing Phone, I think, and I need to double check this, Qualcomm is only officially supporting that chip through Android 13. Whereas, oh. whereas uh, the Pixel, the Pixel will, go, will go through, through, through Android 14 and probably 15. 12, 13, and 14 at least. Okay. We're already on 12, so it'll go through 15. So that's yes, uh, that's going to be a notable cool. difference in like two to three years when the Nothing Phone maybe stops getting updates. Yeah, it'll get security updates because Carl said three sure. years of security. But if you want full Android but OS updates, updates. Right. got it. Yeah. However, yeah. the Nothing Phone's bootloader can be insanely easy, easily unlocked. You right. can flash Lineage OS or something on there if you want. It's going to be up to the people. Like this is, uh, it's also around the same price. Around the same price. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if you value, so here's who I'd recommend gets a Pixel 6a. You are coming from an older or another budget phone that's also 60 hertz, so you're not going to mind 60 hertz again. And you want Google smarts and features yeah, and or a really good camera. The voice, the instant tensors, like instant voice recognition. Voice to text is amazing. It's amazing. Like the recorder app, the speech to text and texting people, everything about that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Better than the iPhone SE would be at that price. Um, and the camera, you get an ultra wide that the iPhone SE doesn't have. And you're just going to miss out on like really, really high end top end performance right. because obviously, you know, for this chip tensor doesn't really have the ultra high end performance and we'll see how it ages shrug. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a higher performing chip than the 778G plus. It is. I don't know. It's, but if you can't feel it, it's a lot of, is it? If you can't feel it, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, with the yeah, true. If it's yeah. sixty hertz, it's like if you're rendering a game at eighty FPS, but you're on a sixty hertz screen, then exactly. Why does it matter? Exactly. Yeah. If you have the phone with a hundred twenty hertz screen, but it can only get up to ninety, it's still gonna feel better than the phone that's locked right. at sixty. Right. Hey, thanks for watching this waveform clip. I uh, just want you to know that if you don't like this clip and aren't already subscribed, then the next package that arrives at your house may or may not be a glitter bomb from me. Just saying. Yikes. <laughs> That's it.